God bless and welcome to Galilee Global, the online campus of the Galilee Baptist Church of Kalamazoo, Michigan, affectionately known as Holy Ghost Headquarters. I'm Dr. Michael T. Scott, Sr., Chief Servant and Senior Pastor, and I am so glad that you are with us today. We believe in the love of Jesus Christ. We also believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. We invite you to come and worship with us. We invite you to come and connect with us. We invite you to come and serve with us. We invite you to come and grow with us. I pray that you're blessed by our time together. God bless you and heaven smile upon you. We want to say good evening to everybody. Thank you for joining us on this wonderful Wednesday night. It is December the 16th in the year of our Lord, 2020. This is our final Bible study for 2020. And so we are excited, amen, to, to continue in God's word, uh, the gospel according to St. John uh, chapter 18. And so come on in the room and uh, begin to click like, click share, host a watch party, and let someone know that uh, Galilee Baptist Church is on the air. This is Dr. Michael T. Scott, Senior Chief Servant and uh, Senior Pastor at V Galilee Baptist Church. And I'm accompanied today by leading lady, Tamara Scott. Amen, what a blessing, what a blessing to have you here with us on this final Bible study of the year. We know that uh, earlier during the year, during the pandemic, you started out uh, with us, mm -hmm. uh, with with me, and we were teaching together, and uh, and then I went back into the church, into the building, and uh, and then you know was uh, flying solo, if you will, mm -hmm. and uh, but tonight we're honored to have you back with us on this evening, and what a blessing it is. So please take a moment if you are on uh, Facebook, share this uh, webcast. If you're on YouTube. You are, if you haven't already subscribed, please take a moment to subscribe to uh, Galilee's uh, uh, YouTube page. And then also you can hit the notification bell if you are on YouTube. Can you explain what that is? So sure, beside the subscribe button, there's a little bell. Um, it's great if you subscribe. Um, we wanna have you as a part of our subscribe tribe, but when you hit the notification bell, then you'll get a message every time we're live, every time something is on the air that's related to Galilee. So make sure not only do you subscribe, but also hit the notification bell. And that way uh, you'll have a little reminder that it's time to tune in. It's time for worship. It's time for Bible study. And there are several exciting things uh, that are coming up um, this weekend and in the months to come, you'll want to receive your notification. So make sure um, that you have both subscribed and click the notification. Bell. That's right. That's right. So you got it. And so you know what to do. I want to say good evening to Dwayne Hendricks. I see you waving. Good to see you, uh, Sister Sherry Warren, Mother Sandra K. Baker, Sister Bernadette Ballard-Reed, Sister uh, Doris Abbott, God bless you, uh, Mother Mae Jones, one of our newly appointed Amen. Uh, mothers uh, on the Mother's Board Ministry. Mm -hmm. uh, welcome. Also, uh, we also welcome Mother Melinda Ligon Whitley, who was also appointed for 2021. Sister Hannah Adedeje, God bless you. Good to see you. Uh, as well as uh, uh, minister in training, Renee Fisher prayed a powerful prayer this morning Praise at God. 6 a.m. Just stirred us all up and had tears coming down all of our cheeks. Sister Vonna Hughes, brother Wilfred Denny, God bless you. Good to see you uh, tonight. Oh, look, Sister Vonna says it's good to see you. She said she's good Hello. to see you. See, folk do miss you. You know, they miss you. <laughs> You know, I do. I know I miss you. I'm, I'm glad, you're, glad you're back in Bible study. But I, I will say this, that while you were not on the screen, you were on the other side True. and tuning in, in the and commenting mm -hmm. and studying the word. So thank yes. you for setting an example. Uh, Kat Haley, God bless you. Sister M Maddie Barnum, good to see you tonight. Deacon J.L. Buchanan, Sister Joanne Smith Gardner and Sister Linda Hunter. All of you, we thank God for you and your presence tonight. And uh, it's just good to speak to folk. Yes. And uh, that's what we were taught 
growing up. It's mm -hmm. no harm in speaking and saying hello and greeting folk. And sometimes we rush, 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 mm -hmm. and you forget to take the time to appreciate life yes. and to appreciate people. And then when something happens to them, uh, you don't miss your water until your well runs dry so true. or until that person is, is gone and yes. gone on to the other side. And then you have regrets. So we take moments at Galilee. Galilee is a hugging church, but because of the pandemic, we can't hug, but we can acknowledge one another True. and speak to one another on Facebook. So amen, amen, amen. Good to see you. Amen, brother, uh, Pastor Jamie Tucker, all the way from the East Coast. Good to see you tonight. Good to see you and Sister uh, Merrill, Sister Merrill, also from the East Coast. Good to see you uh, on this evening. Amen. We're going to jump into our devotional time tonight, and we welcome uh, none other than the infamous, the infamous Deacon Michael C. <laughs> Slater, the chair of our diaconate ministry. And for this uh, final Bible study of 2020, uh, God had it this way. He, he, he situated it so that it would be this way, that he would uh, do our devotion tonight, um, and, uh, and he will lead us in his own way. Deacon, how are you tonight? I'm doing well. Good evening, Pastor and First Lady. How are you both doing? doing We're well. blessed. We're blessed. Excellent. We're blessed. Excellent. And it's Excellent. good to see you as always. And we know you're a busy, busy, busy man. Uh, but thank you for taking time uh, to be with us tonight to lead us in, in prayer and scripture and whatever you want to say. Thank God for you. Well, blessings. Thank you, guys. It's a blessing. Good evening to everyone, the Galilee family. It's been a while, but we know we are still pushing through. So God is still keeping us and maintaining. So God be be praised praise for that. Our scripture is coming from Acts 2, chapter, uh, chapter Acts 2, verses 42 through 47 on this evening. Mm. And I thought it was kind of fitting for us as the believers, knowing that uh, even though we're part of God's spiritual family, the most important thing is for us to work together to move this ministry, this branch of Zion known as Galilee Baptist Church forward. So I'm excited about that. I'm excited that we've made it through the pandemic, almost to that that, that light there's at the end of the tunnel for the vaccine and so forth. But uh, 2020 is coming to an end and, and I'm excited about mm -hmm. what's on the horizon of 2021. Yes. So God be praised for that. Well, the devil thought it was our defeat, but, mm -hmm. but God, so but we are God. still here. Shall we jump into our scripture on this evening? The fellowship of the believers, they devoted themselves to the apostles, teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common, selling their possessions and good they gave to anyone as he had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple court. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily who were being saved. And the word of the Lord is already blessed. Amen. And I think that was so fitting and so right on time for us at this appointed season. Like you said, it's our final Bible study together, but God has just been so faithful to us and so good to us. So let us go to the throne of grace this evening. Father God, we come right now just pausing to say thank you. Thank you for this day, that a new day that we've never seen before. We thank you for your new grace and your new mercy that just showered down on us. And right now, you've brought this Galilee family a mighty long way. And we say thank you right now, Father God. You've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. And we count it not robbery to give you the praise, to give you the glory, which you so richly deserve. Because you've been good to us, Father yeah. God. Some people thought it was over because of this pandemic and someone thought they'd throw in the towel, but God, mm. you kept your loving arm of protection around us. You brought yes. us closer together so that someone could know that there is a, a something bigger behind the scene Absolutely. and that something is Jesus. And oh, we give yeah. you praise right now, Father God, because you've been mighty, mighty good to us. Father God, we ask right now that you continue to strengthen our pastor and our first lady, continue to pour into them right now, Father God, for it's not just, it's been challenging for him and, and not just for him, but challenging as a leader to keep us together, to keep us on one accord, to keep us aligned, to let us know that our faith and not waver in our faith, but know that it's unto you 
that all praise goes right now, Father God. It's not about him. It's not about First Lady. They know it's all about you, Father God. Yeah. And they've shown us that. They teach us that. And they show us by example that if we can give the greatest gift right now of love, loving each other, respecting each other, and just being there for each other as a family, as a spiritual family, as brothers and sisters united together to push each other when we're yeah. at our lowest, when we're feeling discouraged, to push us, to let us know that we can do it and we can make it together. And I mm -hmm. thank you for their style of leadership, for being able to have that humble spirit to just pour into every mm -hmm. single one of us, be it virtually, mm -hmm. be it physically in person, but they never got tired. They never threw in the towel. They kept persevering, kept pushing through. So we give you praise for that right now, Father Hallelujah. God. And then as a church family, you yeah. brought us closer together, I believe. In the, in the midst of this pandemic, yeah. someone yeah. has had a better relationship with someone that they didn't really know. Our elders and our deacons and, and various leaders were calling and checking in on various members. And I think through that developing of relationships, that strengthened that. That made us yeah. stronger. That brought us closer together. And we give you praise for that right now, yeah, Father God. For someone didn't have anyone in their home. They were shut in and all alone. But then they had that phone call that yeah. encouraged them, that gave them that little spark of hope to keep on keeping on. And yeah. we give you praise for that right now, Father God. You've been so good to us. The little things, we count it not, Robert. We don't take those for granted, but we know that's where you show up in the that's in the right. least of things. And that's where you get the greatest praise because you can strengthen us. You can yeah. show us that there is a better way. You can yeah. renew our faith. You can renew our hearts right now, yeah. Father God. And we thank you for it in advance right now, Father right. God. For someone, this is a lonely time of the season, the Advent season mm. because they don't have that specific loved one. If they don't have ends meet right now, Father God, they don't know where the blessing is going to come. But if they just mm. lean on Jesus, yeah. the sweetest thing I know, Jesus yeah. right now, mm. Father God, help them know right now, oh. Father God, that you Whoa. said you'd never leave us nor forsake us. And we're standing on that promise mm. that you didn't bring us this far to leave us. Father That's God, good. right now, somebody just needs to know that the greatest oh. gift right now is just a simple word of love, a simple example of yeah. love, a simple display of love. Let us be those individuals right now to stand in the gap, to give somebody a loving hug, a loving mm -hmm. stare, a loving smile, that they yeah. can be encouraged to continue to run this race that's set before us right now, Father God, mm -hmm. so that you get the glory, that you get the praise. Hallelujah. If we count it not robbery, it's not about us right now. It's about no. us just being able to encourage one another, to strengthen yeah. one another, and be there for one another right now, Father yeah. God, because you're the greatest gift that ever happened right now, Father God, and we Lord give you Jesus. praise for that right now, Hallelujah. Father God. Continue to strengthen and bind this family mm -hmm. known as the Galilee Baptist this church. Bind us yeah. so close together that one cannot fall without the other. Continue yeah. to give us that unconditional love that yeah. flows from heart to heart that we can accept each other in spite of yes. and yes. just because you first loved us. And for that, we mm. say thank you. Thank, thank you. you right now, Father God. Someone is dealing with bereavement right now. Strengthen our bereavement families right now, Father God. You know who they are. I don't have to call them name by name, but you know, Father you God. Know Encourage them right now, Father God. Touch the ones on their beds of affliction right now, Father God. Strengthen them right now, Father God. For we know by your stripes they're healed and we're already touching in the green and declaring release from that that situation. Strengthen them right now, Father God. Make them better right now, Father yeah. God. Then touch our front line and our essential workers right now, Father God. Keep your hedge of protection all around them right now, yeah. Father God. Let them know that it has been a long, tedious journey, but you have kept us and maintained us, and oh, we yeah. give you praise right now, Father God. Thank Continue you. to just be God all by yourself. Show up and show out. Have yeah. your way right now, Have Father God. Way. Have your way right now, Father God. Have As we get way. ready to go into the teaching moment right now, Father God, touch someone's heart right now. Mm. Give them a heart to hear as well as physical ears to hear what mm. thus says the man of God so that we can become better than what we were before we started this That's Bible good. lesson encounter. And we give oh. you all the praise. We give you oh, all the glory because oh. you alone are are worthy. Continue Word. to strengthen us and keep yes. us right now, Father God, as the apple of your eye. And we count it not, Robbie, that we say, in Jesus' name, Jesus thank name. God. Thank amen. God. Thank amen. God. amen. 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 Thank you, Deacon Slater. Powerful prayer and uh, a timely, timely prayer. And we thank you so much for uh, pouring out tonight. And uh, what a blessing. What a blessing. Amen. God, God be praised. Yes, All sir. right. I'm looking right. forward to this word on this evening. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right. Take Be care. blessed. You too. All right. Amen. Thank you, Deacon Slater. What a blessing. Amen. To have a praying deacon. I'm telling you. Amen. Thank God for praying deacons and, 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 and not just deacons, but anybody, a person that can pray and know how to touch heaven and get a prayer through. Because in times like these, certainly, uh, we do need prayer. 
Amen. And so we're grateful to God. Just a few announcements, Lady T, and then we'll go okay. into the, the, the word of God. Uh, just a reminder um, that the uh, Finance Committee is asking all members of Galilee to uh, update your contact information mm -hmm. if you have changed within the year, the address or telephone number, those type of information, that type of information, please call the church office during business hours so that we can update that information so that when it's time to send out the tax contribution statements, uh, they will have the correct address. Also, the finance committee wants you to know uh, that uh, they're asking if uh, individuals want to make end of the year contributions like to the sow a seed uh, challenge and uh, or any other uh, giving. We know some business owners like to, to give at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want credit for that um, for uh, 2020, you need to uh, probably give it by December 26th because Christmas this year is on a Friday mm -hmm. and the clearinghouse is moving really, really slow as everything is moving kind of slow. Mm -hmm. So uh, so they want you to know that it's not our fault, but just the system uh, in general. OK, also, don't forget, don't forget Project Angel Tree. Thank you all for responding. Some of you have given uh, some of you have given toward this effort. You can do that. You can still do that at our church website where you go to secure give, we're giving gifts to to children in need. Um, we're calling it Project Angel Tree. You can call the church office during business hours, 269-349-5597 if you would like to pick an item to contribute or if you would like to just give and then the committee will do the shopping and purchasing the, the clothing and the toys. Uh, you can always just give and put uh, Project Angel Tree. Also, don't forget this Sunday, December the 20th, is our annual Christmas program at 6 o'clock p.m. on all of our platforms. The program will include Christmas speeches, musical selections, uh, snippets, testimonials. We will also wear our ugly Christmas sweaters on that Sunday, and we ask that you will take a selfie and then begin to post it uh, to the church's timelines so that uh, we can judge who has the ugliest Christmas sweater. <laughs> this is our final Bible study for 2020. Next Wednesday, uh, there will be, we're on holiday break and the Wednesday after that, which is New Year's week, we're on holiday break. The class will resume on January the 6th. Thursday, December 31st is watch night worship. And we will also burn the mortgage of our facility uh, at the 11 p.m. service. Uh, and so you don't want to miss it. We're going to have a high time in the name of the Lord. And we're going to celebrate, amen, that God has brought us successfully yes. through this year. Millions didn't make it, but we're one of the ones who did. And we're going to shout. We're going to celebrate. We're going to dance. And we're also going to celebrate the fact that God has allowed us to pay off uh, our uh, facility, our mortgage, starting out at uh, $3 million, and to have that paid off to God be the glory for the great things he has done, not only paying that off, but the mini bus that was purchased and also all of our video equipment and cameras that uh, were purchased two years ago prior to the pandemic. All of that is, is uh, the debt is a liquidated, liquidated. So we give God praise. Yes. Amen for that. So that's December 31st. Also, the new adult book uh, for spiritual enrichment hour will be distributed on Saturday, January 2nd, between 10 a.m. and 12 noon, as well as the book entitled Post Quarantine Church six urgent challenges and opportunities that will determine the future of your congregation. Anybody, whether you are a ministry president or not, if you desire this book, please be prepared to contribute $5 for the cost of the book. Have exact change, please, to assist in offsetting the cost. The book actually costs more than that if you go online, but the church has purchased books in bulk and, uh, and we don't, you know, we're just trying to offset the cost to make it uh, easy for people to get. Uh, don't forget Sunday, January 3rd, we return to our in-person gathering with a limited number of people. And so uh, more information is going to be presented to you about that so that you'll know all of the CDC guidelines and how you are to call to make a reservation to get into the church. Also, January 9th for all of our servant leaders for 2021, leadership orientation will take place virtually 
uh, at uh, 9 a.m. on Zoom. And that information will be sent out by way of robocall and also by way of email to all of the leaders. January 10th, the installation of uh, Galilee Servant Leaders. The attire is black and white, whether you're at home, watching virtually still get up and get dressed put on your black and white raise your right hand and you'll be installed into your into your official role for 2021 and those that are in the building you you put on your black and white as well and then you will also uh stand at, in your seat and uh, you will be installed into office lady t we also want to talk about briefly the 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 21 days uh, it's that time of year again, yes. right? Yes. The 21 days of prayer and fasting uh, is rapidly upon us. Absolutely. And I know many of you are full. You're full. You're getting ready to get full on uh, fruit cake, huh? And oh. uh, yeah, yes, yeah, fruit cake and eggnog and uh, all kinds of goodies, uh, goodies and Cookies desserts and cakes and, 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 cakes and, and all pies and. Pies and, and, and Oh my goodness. And so uh and so you're going to you're going to you're going to need a time of spiritual renewal starting on January 1st uh through January 21st a time of cleansing. I know I need it. I know I, you know we've been through a rough year, it's been a challenging year and we're going to spend the first 21 days in consecration and prayer and fasting mm -hmm. and this year the fast is a little bit different it's a than, lot of it oh different. don't say that honey don't say that uh, let me Everybody, say this let me say this it's a lot different let me say this it's not for the faint at heart okay okay it's not for the it's not for the faint at heart this is a mature fast it is. because we are on another level right i mean the, the enemy is fighting us and he's warring against the the church and against the body of Christ, but so the true. gates of hell will not prevail against it. And so we can't. We, I mean, we 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 took baby steps. We've right. tried one day fast, uh -huh. three day fast, uh -huh. and seven day fast. Right. And so this one is a twenty one day, but it's all completely a complete Daniel fast. Mm -hmm. The Daniel fast is fruits and vegetables, uh, whole grains, nuts, seeds. Uh, quality oils. Uh, you can't use vegetable oil. It has to be uh, like olive oil, peanut oil, sesame. Grape yes, grape seed, walnut oil, avocado oil. Everything is going to be is going to be all natural, right? right? Sister Wendy, <laughs> that's only right. Yes, this is yes, this, yes. This is your COVID yeah, weight. COVID weight is going to come off. You know, I've got a little tummy as well that because uh, my honey. Uh, all through the pandemic, she was, you know, trying all kinds of things and said, honey, you want to try this? You want to you want to try that? And it sure was good. I'm telling you, I didn't have no sense but to sit there and eat it. And now look at me, look at my cheeks and all that. So we're going to go through a cleansing and a time of prayer. And our men led us in prayer for 31 days in October. Yes. So, uh, so in January, our women... Woohoo! Are going to be taking the lead uh, in leading the prayer, the daily prayer, uh, starting January the first through the twenty-first. There will be a different uh, woman of God uh, from within our congregation, uh, and so we're still putting that together. And uh, so, stay by your phone. You might get a phone call, ladies, asking you to take one of those uh, Wednesday mornings at six a.m. Yes. Okay, and not, not just Galilee, but also uh, we've got Galilee Global as well. Those yes. uh, uh, per persons that participate in all of our services, all of our Bible studies, but they uh, they just don't live in Michigan, you know, and so they're part of the family too. And so I'm gonna be I'm gonna, we're gonna be coming for you and uh, inviting you to participate uh, in the time of prayer, six a.m. Six to 6.15 every morning uh, starting January 1st and concluding on the 21st. That's right, Sister Fields, we can do it and we will do it. And Jesus sacrificed more than that for yes, us. So we can sacrifice that as well. Also, it's not in the, it's not in the fasting paperwork, but uh, there are those we know that have medical conditions right. and they're not able to uh, to to do to do the the fast because of their physician tells them not to, mm -hmm. um, but most physicians will will Encourage tell you it. to to do it because it's healthy, mm -hmm. and um, you know and they they want their patients 
they come off of greasy foods and, mm -hmm. and a whole lot of, of, of meat and stuff mm -hmm. that clogs your arteries mm -hmm. and uh, your digestive system. So, uh, so there are some physicians that they tell the members, uh, we want you to participate in it. They but do. the members, they don't tell the pastor that that's what the doctor <laughs> said. They just say, I got to check with my doctor. And, uh, doctor and the doctor said, yes. And <laughs> I've had many physicians call the church and said, thank, thank you, pastor, for, for, for putting this together. If all of my patients had this uh, information, mm -hmm. they would be healthier, you know? Mm -hmm. And so we're looking forward to it. I'm including in, in my own personal time uh, to come off of Facebook. Mm -hmm. I'm doing a Facebook fast in addition to the food fast. Uh, I just need 21 days and I won't be, I mean, I'll be on for Bible study, but I'm not going to be on, you know, how we scroll and look and see what's going on and trying to find out what's happening and a whole lot of drama. None of that. For 21 days, you won't even see my face on Facebook unless it's for Bible study or unless it's for Sunday morning church service. But other than that, that's what the Lord told me to do. And I'm offering that also to some of our members that claim, right. they claim every year they can't fast, but, you, but you're on Facebook and you're starting confusion and drama. And so what we can do is we can fast from Facebook. Come on, somebody. <laughs> For 21 days, we can do it, can't we? Yeah, we can't can. We? Okay, no, we, we can, can do it. All right. Yeah, well, I know you could do it because you've been off for a while. <laughs> and I said, where have you been? And you said, I just I just took a break. I just took a break. Sometimes you got to do that so you can get your mind renewed and focus on the word. Focus on prayer and focus on meditating on the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So, Lady T, if you want the information, what can they do? If you want the information, you can go to the church website, www.gvckazoo.org, um, and we'll put that in the chat so that you can see that. Go there and you can download um, all the information about the fast. If you cannot do it that way, if you call the office at 269-349-5597, Sister Kathy will uh, answer the phone and she will assist you in getting it the best way you know how. Amen. Glory to God. So you have those options uh, to get the information. So we want to receive um, some sort of notification from you, whether uh, it's via email or an inbox. Uh, on the last page of the fast, we right. ask that you would let us know um, just the two of us right. that you are participating with us because when we have um, the prayer time and when we right. have our additional prayer time um, together, that doesn't include um, the entire church family. We call out the names of the right. individuals who are on the fast. I think that's so Every important day. for you to know right. um, that you're not in it by yourself. And even right. the day, you know, you know how the fast goes. The first day you feel like quitting because you get a headache because right. you can't run to your favorite snack or your right. favorite fast food place and get a fix. But you right. know, we're praying for you that you would be able to endure uh, even the the first day jitters, the right. first day headache, the first day right. giving up your Starbucks run, right. your Big B run, because it's an adjustment. Right. Um, but you can do this. It's absolutely possible. Right. Uh, focus and know, you know, that God, He wants to do something something awesome right. in you right. and you can give up just a few of your favorite things right. for just a few right. days in order to right. hear him work clearly. Right. Yes, sister feels coffee. No coffee. No, no coffee. coffee. No alcohol. No <laughs> no, sodas, no, no, no pop. No. Sodas on your on the East Coast they say soda. Right. And over here is pop. Coffee, lattes, espressos, no Red Bull, no Gatorade, mm. uh, no solid fats, lard, margarine, uh shortening. I can't believe it's not better. None of that. Uh, all deep fried foods, you can't have any of that. Corn chips, French fries, potato chips, all refined and processed foods, uh, none of that. Any leavened bread and yeast uh, baked goods, uh, all of that, none of that you can have. Uh, no butter, no cheese, no cream, no milk or yogurt, no bacon, no beef, no eggs, fish, lamb, poultry, pork, all of that. You have to let it go. Pray about it and let it go. This year, also, we have something new. We always have the text system where if you sign up every mm -hmm. day of the fast, you get a text message from the pastor and leading lady with a scripture and, uh, and an encouraging or inspirational word, or we send, or we'll email it out to you. But you have to complete 
the uh, the back sheet of the uh, <laughs> the the back sheet of the uh, fasting packet. In addition to that, this year something new: the pastor uh, will be uh, reinstituting season two of the podcast. So the podcast will go out every day. Uh, uh, starting on January 1st. Mm -hmm. uh, and so people can use that for inspiration when you get hungry and when you get weak and when you get tired or you start getting those withdrawal headaches, mm -hmm. just play the podcast in your ear of the word and you'll be able to encourage yourself in the Lord. And then uh, also uh, in addition uh, to the podcast um, and also in addition to the text and the uh, email, um, we do have some other surprises and great things in store for you. So we're hoping that you will uh, make sure that you sign up. Right. I know co no all coffee. All of the coffee I know, people. I know, all I, know, the I know. No Pepsi. I Listen, know, I know. save but, all of your coffee money so you could get yes. new shoes. Oh, no. Don't tell them that, Lady T. Don't tell them that. No, they could take that money and put it in the uh, sow a seed, right? Sow a seed, sow right? <laughs> Right. Well, so, so a seed, seed is over. So a seed will be over by then. Okay. We're, we're going to think of something else. Something else is coming up. Oh. So anyway, uh, so let's govern ourselves according and let's make sure that uh, you go to the website or you can call the church office, get that information back to us all mm -hmm. through the holidays. Just fax it in or email it in so that we can start working on uh, getting all that in place. So thank God for that. Uh, just a reminder, Hillside, Linden Grove, Millwood Elementary, Fox uh, Ridge, and Old Central uh, will be distribution sites for free food on December 21st and December 28th from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. First come, first serve. So please keep that in mind. Uh, and then also the men's ministry will have our end of the year Zoom on this Saturday, uh, December 19th uh, from 6 o'clock p.m. to 7.30 p.m. And the Zoom room starts with 784. So you you know what that is So for, for those from Galilee. And so we'd love to have the men to be a part of that. We had a great, great men's fellowship earlier this year uh, in the fall, and we want to continue that. And we want to have a nice uh, end of the year fellowship. So let's uh, prepare for that. Okay. Any other, any other, anything else going on before we go into the word? Well, there's a lot going on, but it's time to uh, get into tonight. So time to go into the word. Right. So we're in John chapter 18, mm -hmm. John chapter 18. And uh, we want to take a look. Amen. Uh, John chapter 18. And let's start at verse number 12. You should have the handout already before you, which is um, the uh, handout that is on the church website entitled John chapter 18, Guilt and Grace in the garden, part two. Uh, guilt and grace in the garden, part two. And the memory verse is John chapter 18, verse number 36. Let's read the memory verse together. Ready? Mm -hmm. Read. Pilate therefore said to him, are you a king then? Jesus answered, you say rightly that I am a king. For this cause I was born, and for this cause I have come into the world, that, that I should bear witness, witness to, to the, the truth. truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. Amen. John 18, verse number 36. That is our memory verse. So please uh, meditate on that even after we've gone off the air. All right. And we're in John chapter 18. And we want to, we've already covered, uh, we've already covered verses one uh, through 11. Okay. All right. Verses one through 11, but what we will do uh, tonight is we will we will start with uh, verse number, um, actually, let's, let's start with verse um, uh, number seven. I said 12, but let's go to verse seven so we can kind of backtrack a little bit. So if you found it, John 18 and seven, then he asked them again, whom are you seeking? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. Therefore, if you seek me, let these go their way, that the saying might be fulfilled, which he spoke of those whom you gave me, I have lost none. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. So Jesus said to Peter, put your sword into the sheath. Shall I not drink the cup 
which my father has given me. Now, verse 12, then the detachment of troops and the captain and the officers of the Jews arrested Jesus and bound him. And they led him away to Annas first, for he was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was high priest that year, Caiaphas. Now it was Caiaphas who advised the Jews that it was expedient that one man should die for the people. Verse 15, as Simon Peter followed Jesus and so did another disciple. Now that disciple was known to the high priest and went with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest. But Peter stood at the door outside. Then the other disciple who was known to the high priest went out and spoke to her who kept the door and brought Peter in. Then the servant girl who kept the door said to Peter, you are not also one of this man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the servants and officers who had made a fire of coals stood there for it was cold and they warmed themselves and Peter stood with them and warmed himself. We'll stop right there. And uh, we're going to focus on verse uh, number 10. So we'll focus on verse number 10. Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it, meaning he pulled it out of the sheath and struck the high priest's servant, cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. All right. So question number one on the handout uh, is a, a multiple choice question. Uh, and so Lady T, you want to guide us through that uh, that first question there, and we'll look to the scriptures for the answer. Sure. Peter's sword symbolizes what? Against the will of God. A, submission. B, denial. C, rebellion. Or D, both B and C. Right. So the question is, what does Peter's sword actually symbolize? And it gives you four, four choices or four options, submission, denial, rebellion, or both denial and uh, rebellion. And, um, and most of us are saying uh, that the answer is rebellion very well. It symbolizes rebellion because of the fact that uh, the will of God was for Jesus to drink the bitter cup. When we talk about drinking the bitter cup, we're talking about for Jesus to face death. Mm -hmm. Jesus knew that that's why he had been born. And so the thing about Christmas, we celebrate the birth mm -hmm. of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But the thing about it is, is that Jesus was born to die. Mm -hmm. That was the whole purpose of his death, okay? He, he was born to, to, to be the lamb of God, mm -hmm. to take away the sins of the world. And so that was the whole purpose of his, of his birth in the first place. We learned last week that Jesus is known as the second Adam, mm -hmm. okay? Or the last Adam. The first Adam uh, was created by God mm -hmm. and uh, basically introduced sin into the world. But the second Adam or the last Adam, Jesus, was born of a woman, okay, and his purpose was to bring life through his death. Isn't that powerful? Isn't that awesome? And uh, so we thank God for that. So that was his purpose. And so if Peter is 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 pulling out a sword and striking the very people that are helping to facilitate uh, the will of God, then uh, Peter is in rebellion but he didn't realize he was in rebellion because he thought he was doing a good thing. But how many know sometimes we can have good intentions and we think we're doing the right thing, but we could very well be outside of the will of God. Absolutely. It was God's perfect will for Jesus to go all the way through with uh, this drama that was about to take place. Mm -hmm. Jesus had to die. This is why he was brought down from heaven through 42 generations. And so for Peter to interfere with that, this was an act of rebellion. Mm -hmm. And so that, that hopefully everyone understands what we're saying. That's why 
It was rebellion, rebellion against the will of God. And sometimes all of us have, have, have rebelled against God's will. Now, don't sit on here and say or act like you're perfect mm -mm. or act like you've never uh, rebelled against God or his will. I don't care if you grew up in church. They all, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And sometimes we just don't want to accept God's will. I think Peter thought he was doing the right thing by standing up for Jesus. Right. But Jesus didn't need anybody to stand up for him because he came to stand up for us. Help me, somebody. Help mm -hmm. me, somebody. And so when Peter's drawing a sword, he's interfering with what Jesus uh, had come to do. Okay. Number two, uh, my turn. Why did Peter fail so miserably? Why did he fail so miserably? And let's walk through this, uh, Lady T, because there's several uh, components to this answer of why Peter failed so miserably. Uh, the first thing is Peter argued with the Lord when Jesus warned him that he would deny his master that very night. Hmm. He's, in other words, he said, "Oh, I'll never deny you. I, I'm gonna fight till the end. I'm a, I'm gonna be with you. I'll even die with you." And that's why. And I don't know how you feel about this, Lady T. You got to be careful when you of what you say you won't do, or that you say you'll never do this, or you'll never do that, mm -hmm. because if you you really don't know what you will do until you're in that situation. That's so true. Has that ever happened to you? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, there are things that you hope that you won't have to do. Um, but until those situations arise, uh, you're not quite sure exactly what you will do. And so then this also speaks to Peter being in Jesus' company. Um, the question comes about how much did he listen? I think people can be in your company and mm. not really listen to uh, what's being shared. And mm. I think we need to be mindful of that as well. When you understand your purpose, mm -hmm. when you clearly understand what you're called to do, mm. sometimes there will be people who will be walking beside you mm -hmm. who are not with you. Mm -hmm. People walking beside you are there in the moment and they see what's happening. But people that are with you, mm -hmm. they understand they're on the same page and they comprehend everything that's taking place. Right. And so for Peter, though he may have felt like he was doing something that was helpful, um, as we look at his failures tonight, um, he wasn't really helping because he wasn't in line with the will of God. No. He wasn't in line with the will of God. So he was making matters worse, actually. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, we do that. Sometimes we do make things mm -hmm. worse. Sometimes the people with us make things worse. Mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes we're with people and we make things worse. <laughs> and so well thought, we yeah. can see this whole situation playing out that uh, Jesus already had prophesied to him, you're going to deny me before the night is out, right. you know, three times. So I already know, oh, no, that's not going to happen. Many a times, you know, we have said, Lord, if you get me out of this situation, I promise you, Lord, I will never. I'll never do that again. Lord, if you get Lord, if you get me out of this situation, I promise I'm going a, I'm to a pay my tithes. If you do this for me, Lord, I'm going I'm to be in church every Sunday. And, 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 and it has yet to happen. It has, you, went that, you went that one Sunday after you promised them, but then you missed a few weeks after that. So <laughs> sometimes it's just best not to even just say, I would I, I would like to do this. Right. Or it's my desire to do that. My strong desire. Or, 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 or Lord, help me mm -hmm. to, to stay focused and to do it this way mm -hmm. or to do it that way. But the truth is, you know, you 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 really don't know what what you'll do, and you and all these Christians talking about I'm gonna die for the Lord, I'm gonna serve Him until I die, or I'm a, or I'm gonna I, I'm gonna go all the way and let somebody put a gun to your head hmm. and 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 challenge you uh, to confess Jesus as Lord. You know, some will say, "Well, the Lord know He understands my heart. He knew I had to escape that that mugger or that <laughs> robber." You know, so. Uh, Sister Reed, thank you. Sister Reed says, the question is, are we listening? Are we listening to God when he speaks or are, are we just walking along with him, but not really paying attention to him? That is the question. And that's a very profound question uh, on this evening. Are we paying attention uh, to, you know, to what he's saying, or is it just going in one ear and out the other? 
or are we not really listening? Okay. Sister Joanne Smith Garvin says, we are all guilty of doing the things that Peter did. Peter uh, argued with the Lord that night. Peter slept when he should have been praying. Ooh. Ooh. How many times have said that? Well, I'll just speak for myself. I have fallen asleep in prayer many times, many times with good intentions. I've fallen asleep with the Bible open with good intentions. I start out studying. Next thing you know, the, the book is reading me. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was supposed to be reading the book and uh -huh. the book ended up reading me and my head was in the book, you know, but oh, eyes man. were closed. And so that's why I, uh, uh, <laughs> Lady T, I, I purchased uh, uh, one of those kneeling, one of those prayer kneelers uh -huh. in my in my prayer room, and and that way I I can get down and it's padded, mm -hmm. and I can get down on my knees, and uh, even though it's padded, it's still uh, your knees still feel the effects of it, so <laughs> that keeps me awake. You know, it's nice. It's a nice wooden uh, one of those nice wooden kneelers, and I invested in that. And uh, one of my mentors said, every preacher need, you need one of these in your, in your home. So that you can, you know, go 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 to God in prayer and you know and 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 spend time with the Lord because it's you know I know you could pray in your bed, but the, you know your prayer is not going to be that effective because most of the time you're going to end up drifting off. So you got to get up, you got to get up, and you got to be intentional uh, with your prayer. Like Peter was asleep when he should have been praying. He talked when he should have been listening. Help me, somebody. And some people are just like that. They they should be listening. Thank you, Brother Denny, who said that God gave us God gave us two ears and one mouth for a reason. OK. All right. And so therefore, we got to keep in mind, stop talking so much. There was a rap song a few years ago uh, back when I was uh, in the world. And, and don't act like you've never been in the world. <laughs> don't act like you don't know. Which song? It was you talk too much and you never shut up. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I forget the name of the I forget the title. But it, was something, comments, it was something to the effect who's, who's, that your mouth almighty, tongue everlasting, <laughs> you talk too much and you never shut up. And uh, that was a powerful, powerful song back in the days, back uh -huh. in the back in the day, the, the, the olden days. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it's so true. Many of us, instead of listening, we're running our mouths. And in, especially in prayer, sometimes you don't need to say everything. Sometimes you need to just listen. And that's why personal private prayer time is so essential oh, because man. it gives you time to listen for what his word is saying to you, for what his voice is saying to you, still small voice in you. So just sometimes just, just be quiet yeah. and, and you can listen to God. He speaks through the trees. He speaks through the birds. You know, some mornings I hear, well, not anymore, it's winter, but the birds are out there chirping. And then I've, 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 I've received many sermons just from nature and just from listening to and watching and observing God's handiwork. OK. OK. And so that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. And P OK, sister, sister minister in training <laughs> <laughs> said that Let that group was run DMC. That's right. That's who it was. I could remember, but I, I knew we had some folk. That that remember that would remember and bring it back to my rem remembrance. It run DMC to, to talk about you talk too much and you never shut up. And uh, and that song just stayed with me. And I'm saved and sanctified now, but I still remember uh, that song. And I remember Run DMC uh, as well. And now Reverend uh, Run is a reverend now. He's actually preaching the gospel in New York. So. God can save anybody. God can save anybody. Right, Sister uh, Karen Evans? Yes, she said, I remember that song. Yes, the birds are praising God as well. Number, okay, let's see. He talked and when he should have been listening. Th get this one. He imitated the very enemies who came to arrest Jesus. We just read that in John chapter 18. For they too were armed with swords. Now, he, here Peter was supposed to be representing Jesus and he pulled out his sword and uh, he wasn't just he wasn't bluffing. He wasn't just uh, making empty threats. He yes. used the sword. Mm -hmm. He actually cut the man's ear off. Mm. 
Mm, okay. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, and so, and so Jesus was like, oh my goodness, put your <laughs> sword up, put it back in the sheath because of the fact that this is not who I am. This is not what I represent. Mm -mm. This is not what I came here to do. I didn't. So, so you're right. Peter did misunderstand uh, what uh, Jesus had said about the sword. And Charlotte Bishop, Bishop says he tried to blend in with them. Correct. Mm. Right. He did. He did try to blend in. Mm -hmm. And so, and so that's not what God wants us to do. We're supposed to be in the world, but not of this world. So we have to live on every day. We have to live amongst this world until God calls us home. But while we're here, we don't have to behave like the people we see that's acting out. Okay. Mm -mm. We don't have to imitate them. We don't have to stoop to the devil's level. And I know it gets very tempting because mm. some of these people, I'm telling you, they'll get on your nerves on your job, uh, in your and sometimes your own family, uh in, in the school. What I mean, sometimes you could be in the store. Ooh. I mean, especially this COVID season, and people are coming up to you and all in your face and all in your space. My goodness. And you, but listen, we got to be set apart. We have to be set apart. There ought to be something different about us than those who are in the world. Not that we're better than anybody, no. but we ought to have a standard for our lives mm -hmm. uh, as, as believers in Christ and as Christians, okay? And that's what we have to do. Uh, and so that's, that's very true. But then he says, could it be that something happened that made him react? Yes. Yeah. It, it, that's a good question. It was jumping it, off. Yeah. It was about to jump <laughs> off. Yeah. Th this was when it really got real. You know, as when people say, you know, it just got real, you know. And so when it got real and the people had come to arrest Jesus and they were getting ready to make a move, you know, because notice what we read is that they asked, uh, they were looking for Jesus. Okay. Jesus didn't run. No. He wasn't a coward. He wasn't scared. He was like, who are you looking for? <laughs> uh, come on, somebody. Right. Who are you seeking? Now, you know, Jesus, Jesus had to be one. Of, he, listen, I'm not even going to say it. But anyway, Jesus said, who are you looking for? OK. And they answered Jesus of Nazareth. That was his government name. OK. <laughs> Where he was from. OK. Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus didn't run. He didn't cower. He didn't uh, put somebody in front of a dummy, pull a dummy in front of him. What did he do? He said, I am he. OK, I'm who you are looking, looking for. for. OK. And Judas betrayed him and stood with him. And now he, when he said to them, I am he. That's when the men fell back. Mm -hmm. OK. They fell backwards to the ground. OK. Because the I am had spoken. Mm -hmm. Then he asked them again. Who are you seeking? Now, imagine this. They on the ground. <laughs> They're scrambling around on the trying ground, to trying to get up. He said, who are you looking for? Okay. All right. <laughs> Jesus answered, uh, I have told you that I am he. So if you seek me, let these go. So what he was saying is the disciples that were standing around, let them go ahead. Let them go. You want me. You came for me and I'm not running. And what you need to do is let them go and take me into custody, okay, that that he could fulfill the prophecy that was spoken of those whom you gave me, I lost none, okay, uh, and so therefore, uh, and therefore, um, that I hope that answers the, the the question. Number three, explain why Jesus did not need Peter's protection. Anybody want to take a guess? Why did Jesus not need uh, uh, Peter's security? or Peter's protection. Anybody, take a guess. You know, there's no wrong answer, but the answer you don't have. Jesus could have summoned legions of angels. Correct. Yes, uh, Sister uh, Joanne Smith Gardner, he could have called on legions of angels for protection. Jesus' act of grace prevented Peter from being arrested and put to death. Very good. Right, right. All right, he could have called down angels. That's the key. All right. He had the authority to do that. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, like a few weeks ago, uh, a certain uh, evangelical preacher was calling on angels and was sending angels to the election uh, from Africa and from South America. Well, Jesus actually has the authority 
to do that. And at any moment, he could have uh, summoned angels right. to come and wipe out all of those people that had swords and that were coming to arrest him. He is the son of God, right, Sister Merrill. And so therefore, uh, you know, he didn't need uh, Peter's help. That little sword against all those other people mm -mm. that had swords as well and torches, P Peter would have been done. Now I know he would have got a few, he would have cut a few heads off, Just but few. there's no way that he could have, no, you know, done the kind of damage that an an that angels could have done. Mm -hmm. So, but Jesus didn't need the protection. Okay. Jesus didn't need all of that. And I know some people have used this verse to say, well, why do we have uh, security ministries in church? Well, why do we have, you know, well, why do we have, you know, uh, you know, we don't need, we have the Lord, we have the Lord. Let's, let, let, let me break it down this way. Jesus can call on legions of angels. <laughs> That's Jesus. Now we're human beings. Okay. And therefore, if angels are coming, it's because they've been dispatched by God himself. And the word says that he will give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways, lest you dash your foot against a stone. OK, but we don't tempt the Lord no. and go and step out in front of uh, a, 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 a moving bus and say the, the angels are going to come and rescue me. You're tempting the Lord. We don't go and stand on top of a building and jump off the building. No. The angels are going to pick me up before I hit the before I hit the ground. That's tempting the Lord. Okay, uh, so we don't do that. So you 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 know so the same thing in church. We do have security. We do have people mm -hmm. that are. Why do you think Jesus told his uh, disciples Peter, James, and John, "Watch while I pray." Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're supposed to watch and pray. So you always need people that are going full force in prayer, but you need some people that's got their eyes open. You need somebody that's watching because God did not call us to be fools. Come on, somebody. You know, that back in the back in the old days, there used to be a time when everybody would bow their head in prayer, and that one person that wasn't delivered was going around and putting putting their hands in people's pocketbooks. And taking money out, and, and by the time everybody opened their eyes, they had been clipped. Mm. Okay, because nobody was watching, and so you always got to have somebody with their eyes open, mm -hmm. and make sure that it's somebody that's not going to be asleep, and somebody that's going that is trustworthy, that's going to, you know, that's the way it's supposed to be. Okay, mm -hmm. so I hope that uh, brings clarity uh, to that. Number four, what was the name of the servant whom Jesus performed? His last public miracle. Lady T, you want to give us the choices there? Uh, the choices are A, Pilate, mm. B, Annas, mm -hmm. C, Caiaphas, mm. or D, Malchus. Mm, which one do you think? All right. So Mother Callie Rucker. Mother Callie Rucker says the correct answer uh, is uh, Malchus. Very well. Very well. Sister Vonna Hughes also says the answer is Malchus. And that answer is given in John chapter eight, verse, uh, let's see, verse number, let's see, we had just uh, read it. Verse 10, verse 10, it says, then Simon Peter having a sword, drew it and struck the high priest servant and cut off his right ear. Wow, the servant's name was Malchus. I have a deacon in my church, one of our senior deacons, and he loves this verse. This is one of his favorite verses. I don't know if he's one of those Peter kind of deacons that, you know, is carrying a sword on Sundays. I don't know. I don't know. But he's one of my senior deacons, uh, Deacon Amos Light. Oh, my goodness. And this is one of his favorite verses. And he loves to tell the story of how Peter, uh, how Peter pulled out his sword and struck off the servants right here. And he said, Pastor, I can't say it like he says it, but he said, Pastor, you know why he only cut off his ear is because Malchus ducked. He said he almost had his whole head. He almost took the whole head off, <laughs> but Malchus was quick to duck and he nicked his ear. Isn't that something? I said, Deacon, where is it say that in the word? Where is that? We, we're not supposed to add nothing to or take nothing away from it. Uh, but he, he, he loves that verse mm -hmm. and he's always telling uh, people, amen, that Malchus <laughs> ducked. And when Malchus ducked, 
That's how Peter oh, got the ear. Goodness. Amen. But I don't know how true uh, <laughs> that is. What do you think? Shout out to Deacon Light. You're not going to talk about Deacon Light. I know. That's your Deacon. That, that is, <laughs> that's right. Deacon Light your, is my Deacon. Your Deacon Cap. Everlasting. <laughs> my everlasting. Lasting Deacon Cap. Right. Number five. <laughs> if Jesus answered, I'm sorry, if Jesus had the power to stun an armed mob and heal a severed ear, he could have saved himself from arrest, trial, and death, but he willingly blank and he did it for us. Okay, he did he escape? Did he uh, was it fled, uh, submitted, or served? Okay, Mother Callie Rucker, thank you. She says the correct answer is C. And also, Mother Melinda Ligon Whitley also says the correct answer is C. Uh, he willingly submitted. And that's a word that many of us don't want, we don't hear much and we don't want to talk about it a lot. Uh, but uh, a, a key to our relationship with God is submission. Okay. Mm -hmm. what, what did he teach us in the model prayer? Thy will be done. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Okay, so not about what I want, mm -hmm. not my will, but thy will. That's what submission is. Okay, mm -hmm. so Jesus, he could have saved himself. He could have went on back to glory, whatever. He could have went on and said, you know, bump this, as the young people say, forget the cross. I'm going on with my life. I didn't sign up for all this, but he went on and submitted and he did it for us. And the old songwriter said he would not come, he could, he would, would not, not come down right. from the cross just to save himself. But he decided to die just to save, hey, hey, me. You remember that song? I, I, I do. That's an old time, old time song, powerful song. Number six, your turn, T, number six. Why were Peter's actions in the garden inappropriate? And how do we make the same mistakes in our, our lives? lives? Right. How do we make the same mistakes in our lives? Yes, brother, Denny, you're right. Uh, submission means accepting or yielding, okay? Not, 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 push, not push back. Many of us, we push back against God. We push back against his will mm -hmm. or his desire his intention, mm -hmm. his agenda, because we want to do what we want to do. And that's not the right way to go. Okay. And I think that's part of why we're in some of the mess we're in, uh, in this world today, and this pandemic we're experiencing. Uh, and even throughout the Bible, you see that when people don't want to submit, they end up making themselves a candidate for um you know uh, all kinds quarantine. of quarantine yeah <laughs> candidates for quarantine all kinds of chaos because you 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 outside of the will of god mm -hmm. you you outside of the will you, and to submit uh, also me also means that you respect uh the person whom you are submitting to hello um i think this this crosses over into so many areas mm -hmm. number one our relationship with christ your we relationship submit our will to his meaning that you still have your own will you still have your own idea of what you want to do right but because you know his will is greater or better for you than even your own concept. Listen, God, I respect what you're trying to do for me. I respect uh, who you are and what you have the ability to do. And so instead of going with what I was going to do, I'm going to go ahead and uh, go with what you what you had in mind. Right. Um, but then it also translates into our earthly relationships. I think some of the challenge um, that people face in relationships is something is missing, and that's respect right. uh, in their relationships. Um, talking about their relationships with their friends and people who are in uh, relationships, uh, husbands and wives, uh, people that are engaged, uh, people that are dating. A lot of times we find out everything is all good. Uh, uh, until we start talking about submission and it goes both ways. I'm right. not saying that it's only one person doing all the submitting, but um, when you respect an individual, you trust mm -hmm. that if you're uh, in partnership and companionship with this person, you respect mm -hmm. them enough to submit to what God's will is as it relates mm -hmm. to all parties involved. So respect is a big deal in submission. So if you're disrespectful, mm -hmm. uh, your submission is off. Mm -hmm. Um, if you refuse to submit, that is a form of disrespect. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think that is something to consider. Um, 
not only as we walk through our daily lives, mm. but in our relationship with God, do you trust God enough mm. to respect him and mm. submit to what he wants versus what you want? And you know mm. what happens when you do what you want. Mm. You have to end up going back to him mm. and asking him to fix mm -hmm. what you did uh, that you wanted to do. Mm. And then if you if if you are wiser, you'll say, well, OK. God, I'm gonna go with uh, you know, what you mm. had set up, <laughs> which you could have avoided right. that little detour, right? You know, and stuck with what what He had already set up. Right. But as we grow and we mature, uh, and as we are perfected in Christ, yes, we stop taking those long detours because right. you you'll be better off, yes, <laughs> uh, yes. not taking all right. of the detours, right. and and we all take a scenic route, so right. Definitely, yeah. definitely. I think you you helped a lot of people with what you just said. You just said a mouthful. You helped a lot of people. You helped a lot of married couples as well. You know, we counsel uh, married couples and, um, you know, and premarital counseling and what have you. And, you know, submission is a word that nowadays people don't want to, don't want to talk about that. Or even in church, people don't want to talk about uh, the Bible says obey those who have rule over you for they watch over your soul. People don't want to listen to the pastor. They don't want to listen. Because they say he's a man just like me, put on his pants just like me. Mm -hmm. But uh, <clears throat> if we're going according to the word of God, uh, there is a, you know, there is a, there is a, an order uh, that that God wants us uh, to to follow, and then He blesses us mm -hmm. when we're in order, and when See, we're okay. out of order, then we're not uh, we're not going to be. Mm -mm. So that's very important. We're out of the will of God. That's very important. Something you said is very powerful. Uh, we talk about the blessing, mm -hmm. uh, about the blessing of God overtaking us. Yeah. Um, that we're not blessing chasers, but come the on. blessings are coming. But Chasing you us. have to be in order. Oh, the Lord. reason why Lord. you're wondering why haven't your prayers been answered? Mm. What you know? Why aren't things lining up? Why aren't mm. things coming to get? You're out mm. of order. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, yeah. things yeah. that God wants to do for you, yeah. things that God could potentially do for you in the future. Mm -hmm. But because you're out of order in so many areas, and yeah. I'm not just talking yeah. about coming to church or right, right, tuning right, right, into right. Bible study, but right. I'm talking about your priorities. Yes. Um, the things that you have put first or right. the people that you have put before him right. and before his will. Yes. You know, if you're trying to figure out how you prayed and cried, you right. cried and prayed, you right. fell out, you've been quarantined, right. you said yes, you told the Lord yes, yes. you told the Lord yes again, right. then you go back to your same bad habits and then you Jesus. know you ask the lord to fix it then you promise mm -hmm. you won't do it again and you you're still locked My down god. and then you're asking god where's your blessing where's yes. your blessing so then if all of these things have taken place are you in order that's the wow. question yeah do you have your priorities right. in order as it relates yeah. to kingdom living right that's what i'll say yeah not your but just kingdom living are right. you in order or out of order is the sign hanging on your neck Right. That says out of order. Ooh. And if it is, come on, fix it, Jesus. Right. Not just Jesus fix it, but do your part. Right. Right. Because there's That's a responsibility right. on our part. There are things that we can do to get ourselves lined up right. uh, with the will of God and with his way. So consider that, that your Lord. blessing is not that it doesn't exist. Yes. Right. Because yes. We, we studied that before. Right. That there's a, a, a room in heaven that has yes. the things that God Stored wants to translate to yes. you in the earth. But if yes. you're out of order, just out like your order. kids, right. you know, if, if they're out of order. Yes. Huh. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. It's not no. happening, Ken. Uh -uh. No, no. <laughs> just like the vending machine. Right. You see the sign on it that's out of order. What do you do? You walk by it. <laughs> right. You keep on. You, you don't even put your quarters in that because you, you, you don't want to lose your quarters because that machine is out of order. But check it out. The sad part is that you can see the machine is full. Come on now. Hello, somebody. And I'm saying to y'all tonight, there's some of you that people can see. The candy that, in the machine. Uh, the chips in the machine. Yep. The soda in the machine. Yep. Come on, somebody. Everything is there. You have everything you need. I can see it in you <laughs> through this screen tonight. You have everything you need to be a hit. Jesus. You have everything you need to be on point. Jesus. But the problem is, my order. brother, my sister, <laughs> you're out of order. Come on into submission. Huh? To the will of God, come on into the order yes. of what God has for your life, yes. and then yes, you can have a snack. That's right. Come on now, <laughs> come on now, come on now. So you said a mouthful submission and respect and order 
uh, obedience, all of that is all. It all goes it, together. It, it and your blessing is tied to together. that. It really is. And then you get upset with people who Listen. seem to be living in the overflow, people who are living uh -huh. in the abundance. It looks easy for them. They Come have everything. Uh -huh. I'm just over here trying to make it. I'm trying. I'm trying. You're not trying because uh, you're out of, order. out of order. You have the ability yes. to call yes. your flesh and your will under subjection. Right. And call it to be in order with right. the will of Jesus Christ. Right. And you just don't do it because right. you don't want to. Exactly. <laughs> Because the flesh is weak, you know, but the spirit is willing. Right. So, so come on, spirit. Right. Rise right, up. <laughs> right. So whatever you feed most is what is going to grow. And that's why we're going on this fast. Come on now. <laughs> come on now. So we can feed the spirit. So we can feed the spirit, the inner man, the inner woman, our spirit man, feed that so that we can get in order in 2021, get in alignment. I just pray. That's my prayer. Lady T is that not just uh, not just individually but collectively as right. a, as a nation we have been out of order we are so far gone True. from what we what we should be doing and how we should be doing things and and it's just a mess but uh, you know what God is God specializes in mess okay he does. He, does. He, he he scooped dirt and dust from the ground mm -hmm. and made something beautiful out of it breathed into our nostrils the breath of life and we became living souls mm -hmm. God knows what he's doing with this thing he does. but we got to be willing to submit yeah. okay what what, what, what what would happen if Adam when God is coming to breathe into him, Adam said, uh-uh, no, uh -uh, uh -uh, don't touch me. Don't touch me. Uh -uh, no, listen, <laughs> just lay there, submit, allow him to have his way and get in order. And then notice there was order in the Garden of Eden. Yes. There was order with what he was supposed to be doing. The yes. animals even knew what they were supposed to and do. And what they weren't supposed and to do. And what they were not supposed to do. Huh? There was order on Noah's Ark, how they got on, how they came off, when they came off. Come on, somebody. Hello, we get ready to go back to church, but we got to go back in, in order. order. Come on, somebody. <laughs> or to get shut down again. Mm. Come on, somebody. You know, and I think if things had been done in order the first time, right. hello, maybe that we wouldn't have had this second wave of the pandemic, all that kind of stuff. But people got so restless. A lot of people pre-opened up prematurely for the economy, for money. Once again, priorities out of place. huh? And so out of order. And then this is what you get. So maybe we need to just seek God so that we can just come together, get in order, get our lives together. You can't be in the military and refuse to submit. Mm. You're going to get court martial. Right. You can't you can't be a private telling a, a sergeant or telling a colonel or telling, a, a, you know, the, the 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 general, a four star general. No, I ain't going to do it. Well, get out. Okay, get out, <laughs> right? You know, because you evidently don't know the order mm -hmm. of how things operate, and God does have an order, and He expects us to be decent and in order. Okay, and Peter's actions were out of order, uh, Peter's actions were inappropriate, and we all do make the same mistakes. Yeah, Peter hurt Malchus. That's that's the first thing that was out of order. He cut that man's ear off. And, and and that's something no believer should be doing. I don't care how how much you 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 so called care for the Lord, you care for church, you care for this. You, it doesn't give you the right to go and and cuss nobody out, cut somebody, uh, you know, kill people with your tongue. All of these things, scandalizing people, all that stuff should not be named. Amongst the believers, right? Misuse people, oh, um, abusing know. people. Yes. Huh? Get your flesh under control. Thank you, Sister Karen Evans. Uh, get get your flesh under control. Mm -hmm. And Peter, his flesh was all over the place. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. He allowed the flesh to take over. Peter hurt the testimony of Christ yes. and gave the false impression that Jesus' disciples hate their enemies and try to destroy them. And that's not what Jesus stands for. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing that you know you wonder. Well, what was Peter? What was Peter taking in for those three and a half years with all of Jesus teaching and preaching? And, you know, but, the, you know, he you was can, in the entourage. He, he was in the group. He was in the group. But whatever. Hanging out. But it wasn't it wasn't going no, in, in no. here. Didn't take root evidently. No, no. And that happens in church all the time. It, it happens. I talk to my leaders all the time. You know, the leaders, you should you should be a reflection of your leader. And and when people say things or they do things. And they and to like it is they lie on the pastor. The pastor said this or the pastor said that. People that know the pastor 
No, he's not even like that. He don't even talk like that. That's not even his. <laughs> that's not even his mo. That's that was their translation. His, that's right, exactly. <laughs> so, 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 P Peter was one of those leaders that stepped out in the flesh mm -hmm. and was not following his leadership mm -hmm. and doing things the way his leadership would do things. And Jesus showed him and taught him, even in his mistake. Mm -hmm. Jesus picked the man's ear up and put it back on his. Wow. Ear. Come on, somebody. This was the man that had come to arrest him. And many of us, look, I'm going to tell the truth myself, too. I'd be like, good. He got him. He good. He got him. But <laughs> Jesus did not do that. Nope. Jesus is teaching us how we ought to be. He reached down and healed that man's ear. Huh? The man who was there in the beginning of time when dust was used to form and make a man. Mm -hmm. he was. This is the same Jesus that was there in Genesis don't you think he knows how to put a severed ear back on a head? Huh? He didn't have any, uh, he didn't have an operating room. He didn't have any orderlies or nurses, but he knew just how to heal that man's ear. That's the kind of God that we serve. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's a sad thing when well meaning but ignorant Christians take up the sword to defend the Lord Jesus Christ. And I tell people all the time, especially in Galilee, Jesus is a big boy and he doesn't need our defense. He doesn't need us standing up and arguing or getting into arguments with Jehovah Witness, getting into arguments with Muslims, getting into arguments with other religions, uh, what, what have you. Uh, the word speaks for itself. This is one book that's been around for thousands of years and is still around. Come on, somebody. And, and it's a bestseller. <laughs> to this day, and it stands on its own. The grass withers, the flower fades, the word of God shall stand forever. And I don't have to argue with people, and I don't, especially these people that they think they know, and they think they have the Bible on lock. They know Genesis from Revelation, all 66 books, but yet they're not living what they read. Yet they're not setting an example of love or demonstrating what it means to care. They're just religious but do they have a relationship? I ain't got time for that. So I'm not going to waste my time with endless genealogies and arguing over uh, uh, fables and wives ta uh, wise tales and all those things. Let's just uh, focus on the mission that God has put before us. Number seven, Peter had a sword in his hand. This is fill in the blank. But our Lord and had a cup in his hand. Fill that in the, in the blank. Peter had a sword. Jesus had a cup. Peter was resisting God's will, but Jesus was accepting God's will. Isn't that, isn't that awesome? Isn't that, isn't that awesome there? Yes, indeed. Number eight, the cup represented what? Suffering. He would endure and the separation from the father that he would experience on the cross. So when you hear the talking about the cup in the word of God, cups stand for different things. So in number nine, the cup of trembling is uh symbolizes the scripture in uh, Isaiah 51 and 17. Let's go through these and uh and we're going to conclude uh with with this handout tonight. So Isaiah 51 verse 17 and this is what it says, "Awake, awake, stand up, O Jerusalem, you who have drunk at the hand of the Lord the cup of his fury, you have drunk the dregs of the cup of trembling." and drained it out. Mm. Okay, so that's 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 not a good that's not a good cup, okay? All right, the pouring out of a cup is uh taken from Jeremiah chapter 25 verses 15 through uh 28. Jeremiah chapter 25 verses 15 through 28 and what it talks about is judgment. Mm -hmm. And when it talks about the pouring out of a cup that's speaking of the Lord's judgment, and that's that's not a good cup. You don't want you don't want God uh, as uh, a judge, uh, a frowning judge. You want to see Him as a smiling Smile. Savior. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. The cup of consolation is Jeremiah sixteen and seven. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah chapter sixteen and and uh, verse seven. Let's look at that. It says, "Nor shall men break bread." in mourning for them to comfort them for the dead, nor shall men give them the cup of consolation to drink for their father or their mother. The cup of consolation would be the comfort that you receive from God as you drink from this symbolic cup 
where you're being consoled. And this text was talking about a time and a group of people that would not uh, receive that cup of consolation. And then the last one is the overflowing cup of joy, which is Psalm uh, 23 and uh, the fifth verse, uh, Psalm 23 and uh, verse number five, which says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runneth over. That's talking about the joy that you have within is overflowing, okay? And that only happens when you truly find peace in the fact that Jesus uh, or that the, that God is, uh, is in fact your shepherd and that you shall not want and that he's everything that you need uh, for him to be, okay? Number 10, Jesus was able to accept his cup of suffering because it was mixed by the father mm. and given to him from the father's hand. Mm -hmm. Help me somebody. So he did not resist the father's will because he came to do the father's will and finish the work that the father gave for him to do. And so all of us at some point have to deal with some kind of suffering, but we can do it when we know that God is the one that's in control. Okay, imagine Job who went through all of that suffering, sickness, death, bereavement, lost his properties, all of those things, but yet it was God that carried him through every step of the way. The same thing for you, Sister Robin Kidd, that's watching, and we've been praying for you. It's God that's keeping you. And though you say you it, this has been a rough experience with going through what you've gone through, uh, we want you to know that it's God and that it's, it, he is the one that is consoling you. Mm -hmm. He is the one that's keeping you, okay? All right, and, and you're right, Joanne Smith Gardner, it's mixed by the Father with love. You know, it's almost like where Sister Fields, she talks about uh, how growing up she would uh, have to take the um, cod liver oil, is that what it's called, cod, cod liver oil, uh, and how it was just so disgusting to take, but yet it uh, fought off the cold, it fought off the sickness, it fought off the, it fought off the infirmities, but you, you didn't want it, but you knew that it was mixed with love and placed in the cup by your mom or your dad or your granddad or your grandma. And you knew that it was there to help you, although it did not taste good to you, mm -hmm. it was good for you, right? Okay, so sometimes we don't always wanna take our medicine, but sometimes uh, we gotta realize whose hand is coming from, okay? Mm -hmm. Not everything is the devil. Come on, somebody. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's mixed by the hand of God. Mm -hmm. This cup is mixed by God's hand, but notice it's mixed with love, meaning there's an intention with this uh, for you. And the last one is, and we're done. Uh, why should we not fear the cups that the Father hands to us? Our Savior already drank the cup uh, before us, and we are only following in his footsteps. So whoever is watching tonight, and you are drinking a bitter cup, you're drinking a, a cup of trembling, you're going through a, 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 a cup of judgment, a, a whatever cup you are drinking uh, tonight, uh, we want you to know uh, that uh, you're only following in Jesus' footsteps mm -hmm. because there's nothing that we go through that he hasn't already gone through it before us. And that's why he knows what we can bear. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so we, we we trust him because he knows what's best. Even if the devil is uh, tempting you and sending all kinds of chaos and confusion and trouble your way, it's only because God allowed it. And if God allowed it, then God is not going to bring you to it if his grace is not going to carry you through it. That's why the psalmist said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. Why? Because thou art with me. He's with me. So Robin, God is with you. And whoever else is watching tonight that's dealing with bereavement, dealing with sickness or yes. suffering, yes. Uh, yes. trouble yes. in yes. your home, the holiday season can be lonely, depressing, what have you. Listen, just understand 
that he is with you. That's what the Christmas season is about. We're celebrating Emmanuel. And Emmanuel, when you break it down, that name, all the names mean something. What does it mean, Lady T? God, God with, with us, us. right? Eman, Jesus became a man and dwelt among men. Uh, and so, and L is God. Emmanuel, God is with us. And though he's not in Bethlehem anymore, he's not in the manger anymore, he's not in, you know, in the stable anymore, he is with us in our hearts. Absolutely. To God be the glory. Be we'll the glory. close on that note. This is our uh, final Bible study for 2020. This has been a wonderful, I'm going to say it, it's been a wonderful year. You know, I know everybody's saying cancel 2020. 2020 has been this and that. But listen, we're still here. We're still alive. We're, he, we, we have a testimony. We're, we, we survive. We, are, we have a story to tell, okay? And so we ought to be able to be thankful. But the Bible says, in everything, give thanks. So even in 2020, I'm thankful mm -hmm. and I'm grateful. And I'm going into Christmas, uh, this Christmas, thankful and grateful to see another Christmas. Mm -hmm. uh, when so many uh, can't say the same, okay? Thankful to cross over into a new year. OK, as hard as 2020 has been, I'm still grateful and I'm still thankful. And we've had a blessed time studying the word together. I know we're not in the building. We've had to do it on the computer. But you know what? The word is still going forth. People are still learning. Yeah. We're still growing. And so we have. Let's thank God for that. Let's thank God for that. So amen. All right. Any prayer requests or prayer concerns, you can place them in the comments. Or you can text uh, pray GBC to nine four zero nine zero, and we receive those requests, and uh, we do definitely take those uh, concerns to the Lord in prayer. Uh, if anyone wants to join tonight, thank God for our new member that joined uh, uh, on Sunday. God be praised. Thank God for you. Uh, we're glad to have you. And so, uh, so there are others you we you know that want to join, want to unite with the Galilee family. You're more than welcome. You can text join GBC to 94090 and uh, one of our deacons will call you back and uh, or text you back and uh, we'll definitely uh, go from there. Pray for the McCullough family and the Hutchins family. COVID-19 has hit the family. Again, we're praying for them. Anyone else? Anyone else? Uncle goes for surgery on Friday. Praying for, for your uncle, sister Gutierrez. Anyone else? Okay, Lady T, you want to lead us in prayer? Certainly. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We honor you tonight and we give your name high praise. We thank you for your word and we thank you for your example. Father, thank we you. pray uh, that as uh, we, Father, are at the end or the close of one yes, year yes, yes. and on the cusp of another, oh God, that you remind us that your will is perfect, that it is the best and the safest place yes. for us to be. And we want to be in your will, oh God, doing us what you need to do in yes. order that we might be in right standing with you, <clears throat> with your word, yes, with your Lord. will, with your way. Father, we ask that you would meet needs oh, uh, on this uh, live stream tonight. People have mentioned yes, several family members that are sick, going in for surgery. Father, we thank Touch. you that by your stripes we were healed. Heal. And so we thank you. We received that. So yes. healing on tonight. Those who have prayer requests who are unspoken tonight, God, yes. we ask you to touch now. Yes. Heal, bless, and deliver as only you Jesus. can. Father, we're asking for your hand of protection, oh yes. God, to cover us. Oh God, as we go to mm. and fro, oh God, that your hand of protection would be in the midst oh of us, in the midst God. of our family members. We trust oh you God. with our very lives. Father, thank continue you, Father. to make us the examples, living epistles, Hallelujah. read among men that Men, women, boys, and girls will come yes. into the saving knowledge of yes. Jesus Christ. We yes. thank you that you thank are with you. us. We yes. thank you that you will never leave us, nor will you forsake us. Hallelujah. We thank you that you have not forgotten the promises yes. that you have made. Jesus. For you are the greatest promise keeper of all yes. times. Oh, God, and we believe you by faith, oh, yes. God, that you are taking care of your oh, children. God. Now, as we go to our next activity, yes. as we go to our times of recreation and, and dinner and oh, all that you have Jesus. for us tonight, we pray that we remember, yes, oh, yes, God, the sacrifice sacrifice of your son Jesus on the yes, cross Lord. that we don't take yes, it lightly oh God and that the least oh, we could do God. is live for him and so we give yes, you honor Lord. we give you praise we stand in expectation of thank the great you. things that you shall do in the days thank to come you, in Jesus name we in pray Jesus thank name. God thank amen God. thank amen. God 
Thank God for Sammy White, Lord, touch him. Aubrey Baker, Lord, touch in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Monica Johnson lost her grandfather to COVID. We're lifting the Johnson family in prayer. Amen. In the name of Jesus, have your way, Lord. Yes, and help us to stay in order. Thank you, Aunt Dorothy. Yes, indeed. Help us to stay decent and in order. Amen. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. We've had a wonderful time. I am truly blessed and I thank God for all of you. Amen. We appreciate uh, your attendance and your participation. Don't forget, uh, if you want to cash app the church, dollar sign Galilee Baptist, you want to sow a seed, you can do so, or you can use Secure Give and watch God uh, continue to bless your life. As always, we encourage you to follow Lady T and myself on Instagram at DRMT Scott or at Lady TT Scott. And we, <laughs> that's the inside joke. We'd love to have you uh, follow us on the Instagram. Amen. And come on over. Come on over from Facebook and let's get on the uh, Instagram. Amen. So thank God for that. Don't forget, download the fasting packets and print it out and send it back in if you plan to participate so that we can uh, pray for you every morning starting January 1st to January 21st. And we also plan uh, to send out text messages to those who say that it's okay for us to do so. Or if you prefer an email, a daily email of encouragement and inspiration, if that's what you prefer, we will do that as well. And don't forget to subscribe to the podcast, uh, www.michaeltscott.org. And on that first page, you can subscribe to uh, the pastor's podcast, mm -hmm. which will reconvene January 1st and every day for 21 days. Amen. All right. You all have a wonderful Wednesday night. Get something to eat. Amen. Fill up because January 1st is coming and we're going on the fast and we're going in the time of prayer and seeking the face of God. Have a Merry Christmas. If I don't see you on Sunday at one of our services, 730, 10 o'clock and six o'clock is our Christmas program. And you don't want to miss any of those services. God bless all of you and heaven smile upon you. God bless. Thank you.